In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, the full of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin.
saved me, buried He carried my sins far away. Rising He justified freely forever. One day He's coming, oh glorious day. Everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night online fellowship and our uh, interviews tonight. We have been enjoying those quite a bit, um, so appreciate you tuning in and good to have you here. Uh, at prayer request, continue to pray for Granny and the Lord would comfort her and, and Sister Sarah and Brother Rocky and the family and Brother Randy and the family that the Lord would comfort them and comfort our hearts in the church and uh, continue to pray for one another. Um, do pray for our pastor, that the Lord would continue to lead and guide and so many uh, decisions and things that he has to make, uh, and I know he covets and he appreciates your prayers, and so please just continue to do that. Continue to pray for Sister Donna as well and her health and and uh, carry on the duties of a pastor's wife as well and, and the burden that's there. Just continue to pray for her. Uh, continue to pray for our president and our leaders amongst uh, all the stuff going on, that God would lead and guide them. 
Uh, pray for Brother Skelton. I did uh, get to speak with Sister Skelton just for a minute today, and he's having the same symptoms that he was having that put him in the hospital. Um, he's having just to be careful what he eats, uh, just pain and problems. So uh, just continue to pray for him. The Lord would lead, uh, would heal him and bring him out of this valley. And that's all from the um, the internal shingles. And so he's just still struggling with that. And she said, thankfully, the, uh, the transplants and everything look good. And so all that's great. And thankfully for that, uh, the Lord's keeping him safe there. Um, and as you know, uh, pray for as this hurricane comes in and hits the coast, and it looks like it's going to be a bad one. And, uh, and, and I know as you all do, but pray for mercy there on the coast where it's going to be the worst. Uh, storm swells up to 20 feet is what they're thinking. It could be very devastating, and uh, hopefully everybody got out. But pray the Lord would uh, have, be, have mercy there. And as it comes all the way up through East Texas, um, just and I think by tomorrow afternoon we'll be in the clear, but we could see uh, winds uppers about 70 miles an hour, 50 to 70, um, uh, 5 to 8 inches of rain, somewhere in there, and they're not real sure where all that's going to fall. But that should be, Lord willing, it showed by 3 p.m. We're back to partly cloudy tomorrow. So when it hits the worst, I don't know if they know exactly, but around noon or a little bit before noon, probably tomorrow, rain starts pretty heavy in the morning early. Uh, so just be in prayer for, the, for that, and the Lord would protect and keep us safe. And, uh, and also pray for Heidi Miller. Um, she did test positive for COVID, and so pray for her and the family, and, uh, and also on that note, uh, we'll, we'll be sending out an update later on this week uh, as to what we'll do for Sunday morning and school Monday and kind of how we're going to go about uh, handling those events and things. And so we'll, good Lord willing, we'll update you in the next day or two and, and let you know kind of the plan for that. Um, we did just get that news, so, and pray for our pastor as he has to lead and guide and make those decisions as well. Um, Brother Gerald had uh, some melanoma cut off, cut off his face, and so, and, and everything went well, they said, so just pray for him as he heals up um, also. And as far as announcements go, which I think I do these normally after the videos, but I said it, so I'll do it. But looking beyond this life, tomorrow night, good Lord willing, online at 7, and a Saturday night prayer meeting online at 8, and uh, we'll let you know, but looking forward to Sunday morning, and we'll let you know how that is going to uh, transpire as well. Thank you very much for your patience with us, and as we work those things out. Um, I guess now we'll go to our interview tonight. We, we didn't have a kids in cars ready, so tonight we just have Brother Caleb and Miss Julie, so looking forward to that. Hello, church family. Good to see you all tonight. Appreciate you joining us. And as you can tell, we are here with Caleb and Julie for our interview tonight. And sure appreciate you all joining us and taking time out to do this. Um, let's start off with Caleb. Where were you born and raised? And kind of give us an overview of your life then. All right. I was uh, born and raised in Hemphill, Texas. Uh, my sister and I were a couple of the last babies born there and uh, lived there all my growing up years. Uh, lived in several different houses and uh, my parents now live on some acreage and log cabin we uh, grew up uh, about the time I was 14 we moved out there and thought the power was going to go off in 2000 so we uh, we went off the grid and uh, used generators to run the well uh, actually had hand pumps for the water and carried buckets of water for the livestock and uh, anyway it was fun Girls would hair dry up with the extension cord from the generator. Yeah. Do, do your parents yeah. still have the hand pump by the sink? They don't Not anymore. More. They they renovated the kitchen, got rid of that. But they do. I, I saw them somewhere. They they still have them just yeah just because. But uh, anyway, uh, grew up doing some of that, and I think it was it was good. We actually lived in the barn for a little while while they were building the house, and uh, uh, they got electricity. I don't know maybe four or five years ago, but had no electricity for about, would have been about 15 years or more probably. Wow. 
and uh, anyway, that was quite an experience, and uh, uh, really lived with them till I was in my 20s, then worked in Jasper for a few years, lived there, and uh, shortly before moving here, I was kind of an itinerant worker. I moved wherever the work was for a while, and then, and then uh, wound up here. So well, amen. 2011. So glad the Lord sent you this way, too. Yeah. Julie, and most everybody knows, but you could just cover it. Where were you born and raised? And... I was born in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, I'm not sure the name of the hospital. Uh, we moved to the property when I was two, so I've lived here my whole life. I've never known anything else. Enjoyed growing up here. Go play in the creek, countries. Just mm -hmm. had a good time growing up and going through the school. And that's so, something. Yeah. yeah. Yep, been here all your life. Uh, Kayla, would you like to cover and tell us about your salvation testimony and when the Lord saved yeah. you? Um, well, uh, I grew up in a very Christian home. My parents uh, were always teaching us from the Bible, and we were, we were in church, uh, several different churches growing up because of church splits and stuff, but till about the time uh, we moved out, where they live now when I was a teenager, and then we start home churching and, and visiting other places. And anyway, uh, I grew up very well grounded in the Bible, but my parents didn't always adhere to Baptist doctrine per se. Right. Um, basically, they were Baptists. But anyway, I was unsure about some of the elements, uh, doctrines of grace and things like that, and had a lot of questions as to whether... I had uh, really been saved when I was younger. I, I professed to be saved when I was seven and was baptized then. And then I was baptized when I was 18. I was baptized when I was 20. And, uh, but when I, was, when I was about 20 years old, um, I had just really gotten to a place where I was having a really hard time believing I had been born again at any point before. And some things in my life just convinced me I, I, I wasn't. And uh, anyway, and, and I, I got down to just settle it the way that I, I was like, I don't know how this is going to be any different. I've prayed this so many times. I was like, but I'm, I'm going to stay here till I got it settled. And I no sooner like, hit my knees by my bed, an old hymn that I had known started, it started just running in my head. And uh, said, my faith is found a resting place, Amen. not in device nor creed. I trust the ever living one; his wounds for me will plead. Amen. And uh, I just realized, and I I jumped right up and was excited. And I was like, "Whoa!" I realized it wasn't about me doing step repentance, step confession, step believing in all the things I had tried to assure myself I had done right. It was because of what Jesus did. And I said, "Well, I know He did it right." Amen. And. Uh, and so, anyway, it, it took some time. Actually, I was still, I was still uh, floundering in some ways when I came here. But but being under good teaching and and doctrine and stuff has really helped me be grounded. But I I hadn't seriously questioned that that not I don't I hate to call it an experience, but that revelation that the Lord gave me yeah. of of what it is to be saved. I've never felt the need to renew that because that that realization that it was not based on what I did, it was based on what he did. Amen. And, uh, so I've actually been baptized, I think, four times. The last one was right here in this baptistry, yeah. and uh, I feel settled about it. Amen. Thank the Lord, it's a, it's a good thing to, to be able to know. Yes. But anyway, that, that's my... Uh, Salvation testimony was... That's it. Yeah, that's that good. I appreciate that. And Julie, would you like to tell us about your salvation yes, testimony? Um, we actually have a lot in common in that uh, I can't remember a time when I didn't know the gospel. You know, I remember one of my earliest memories is kneeling in my daddy's lap and asking the Lord to save me. And, uh, you know, sometime in my teenage years, I started questioning, did I do it right? Did I say it right? You know, was I sincere? And... Uh, there was actually a long time, a couple of years, I kind of questioned everything. You know, I questioned, is any of this true? Is any of this real? And, you know, the millennial generation, I'm right in the middle of it. 
a lot of them have walked away from the faith, and and mm-hmm. I was I was close to being one of those, but but God didn't let me go. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it's kind of I've enjoyed hearing other people's testimonies because I know a lot of people have made several professions, and that's just encouraging to me because yeah. most of my church family knows <laughs> I've made several professions, and I think I've been baptized twice, but. Uh, I really got peace um, December 9th, 2012, and uh, I I did I prayed, and, but I realized just like he said, it wasn't it wasn't saying all the words right and getting them all in order. It was just finally God uh, revealing that it's His grace Amen. and what He did was enough, and He gives you the faith and <laughs> and like and it's for me, you know. Yeah. I just realized yeah. the promise is for me, <laughs> yeah. and, and I just you know anytime. The devil wants to come and say you didn't do it right this time. I'm just like, well, you need to talk to Jesus because he said <laughs> he said he did it, and Amen. that's what matters. And I'm just thankful I, I have peace now. That is great. That is great. Nothing like that peace mm-hmm. it really isn't. Well, um, <clears throat> let's cover how did y'all meet, and whoever wants to <laughs> take that question can. I think probably you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as I remember it, the Holseys invited his family to church, and uh, I remember actually Savannah telling me she thought Caleb would be a good match for me, and I was just, I don't like matchmaking, you know, that's silly, and, and uh, it was actually August 1st, it was nine years ago, on August 1st, they came they came to a church service. And ten years. Ten years ago. Okay. Well, Caleb had this huge scraggly beard <laughs> and that is my and first impression hair. and I was just like oh no beard. I don't think so <laughs> but uh I I enjoy talking with the sisters I met them and talked to them and we had been raised similarly and uh we, we hit it off and uh, I think it wasn't till October they came to a wedding and he says I smiled at him but I don't remember smiling but it's just a <laughs> smile <laughs> um, anything flirtatious he and his sister, uh, actually, his sister and I were asked to play for a wedding. And so we would meet up at SFA with the other, it was like a four-string quartet, and I played the flute. And so I was the addition to the four-string quartet. So And um, all of the music was for stringed instruments, and his sister put together some pieces for me to do, and uh, we would come up and practice. and. Remember, he came to the practices and he shaved, and I was kind of like, hmm, he's not that looking. <laughs> and uh, it was at the wedding that uh, it was a wedding, and it, I, we've talked about it. It was kind of, I think that was when we kind of first started to fall in love, but uh, I wasn't sure what he was going to do about it. And I'd invited his family to camp meeting, and that was coming up in April, and the wedding had been in March. And uh, so, there were six weeks from the wedding when we both knew there was something there, but I, I wasn't sure what he was going to do about it. To camp meeting, and he came to camp meeting, and that was kind of it. The rest is history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A lot of people think we first met at camp meeting, yeah. <laughs> and, but yeah. we've known each other a little bit <laughs> before then. Right. First right. time I remember seeing Julie, we had come that August visit the church and, and the Holseys had invited us and we were having lunch with the family in the rec room and I thought I didn't know anything about this place and so I thought it was kind of like a private you know thing and whatever and and next thing I know in pops this redhead and is standing by my dad just waiting to give him something I'm like oh that's that's cute you know and she's just waiting so patiently and then she gives him a cd uh, of the sermon or whatever, and she goes and sits down with my sister, so I'm like, well, that's kind of bold, you know, <laughs> just pop in here, like, you own the place and whatever, and, and the next thing I know, here come other kids, and I realize this is a, this is not a very private room, you know, and stuff, and so I start looking at her, and I'm like, she's over there talking to my sisters. Hmm, I like that. <laughs> and so, uh, so we left, and I asked my sisters, I was like, who is that girl came and talked to you on? I said, her name's Julie, and I said, oh, okay. I think I might be interested in that Julie, and so that was in August, and I didn't really see her again until October, and then around the wedding, I, I knew she was going to be playing with Maddie in the thing, and so I started going to the practice, and just the more I saw her, the more interested I was, and uh, anyway, but yeah, the Lord just really gave me a, 
assurance. I had, uh, I had been in a in an engagement before that went south right before the wedding, and I just didn't want to go through something where I had bucked my parents on that, and I felt like that was why nothing ever worked out with that, and so I want everything to be right. And so right. a camp meeting, it was Tuesday, a camp meeting, and, and I got down and prayed, and I was like, Lord, I, I just want to know, because I I was in love by then. I was I was pretty pretty bad off actually <laughs> but I didn't want to get I didn't want to get outside of what God wanted for right. me and so uh, he just really gave me a piece that was hard to explain and I, I was so happy and then I started crying because I realized you know he had really had this good thing for me all along and everything else had been kind of bringing me to that place and so anyway I was yeah. I had actually been praying that the Lord the rest would reveal history would reveal to him if it was right. I was like, Lord, will you just tell him if this is right? And, and hurry up at it. <laughs> well, he knew before I did. It was like, I by the end of camp meeting, I realized he was very serious yeah. and he was going to do something about it. And I got a little <laughs> yeah. nervous. And uh, One was, of the favorite things was the first time I told her I loved her, she said, well, I love you too, but I don't think I love you as much as you love me. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's good. That, uh, she repeats that every now and then. So. <laughs> gives me something to work on. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Well, who would like to tell us how, how did he propose? Hmm. Well, interesting backstory to that. Um, the week before he proposed was a camp at Brother Audie's, and I was a counselor there. And you were preaching, and I wasn't real happy with you at first because you really challenged me what? from the pulpit, uh, and you did it to several of the girls who had guys, so it wasn't just me. But And you told me, you said, I'm not saying this isn't right, but you need to know if it's of God. And so it challenged me, so I, I went down, I prayed, and I said, Lord, if this isn't right, then I don't want it. And I was like, I want, I want to know that it's right, and I'm willing to lay it down. So we came home. It's always, I get emotional talking about the Lord, how it works in my life. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, so, and Dad, Caleb had asked Dad if he could ask me to marry him. And Dad had said, well, let's wait till September. And this was like June. And so that was in our mind. We can't get married or engaged till September. And so that weekend, you know, I prayed about it. And I, I came home and I was sick. I was exhausted. And, well, his birthday was coming up in a few days and after church dad told him he said hey i got a birthday present for you he said you can ask julie to marry you <laughs> and dad had had gotten peace or way earlier than he thought and just knowing and so so that sunday <laughs> he took me out on a drive and i knew something was that same up. day yeah like an hour after i got permission that same sunday i was i hadn't <laughs> gone to she church was sick, poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> I had gone to church, but I was feeling better. And he's like, hey, do you want to go get an icy? And so I was like, okay. And we're coming down the back roads. And uh, he said, hey, let's get out and look at this tree. I, I know it's your favorite tree. And I was like, I, I started realizing something was up. And uh, he kind of started rambling <laughs> a little bit. And I could tell. I nervous. I could tell he was nervous and that he wanted to propose. And I was just like, if he doesn't do it now, I mean. What's, what's the problem? I said, is there anything else you want to say? And, and then he just got down on one knee and was like, will you be my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to hug you. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so I gave him a hug. Oh, oh, so I was man. going off kind of half-cocked in her <laughs> ring. I, I had the band, but I didn't have the stone. And uh, I just I realized, I was like, man, I have really not planned this out very well. And I was like, maybe I should just step back and 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 you know work this out a little better before I you know ask her she might say no because I'm going off so half cock so but she <laughs> she gave me just a little encouragement when she says there anything else she wants to say now if I don't say it she be like what happened I'm, I'm ready to say What's wrong yes with you yeah. Yeah. exactly so well we ran home and told mom and <laughs> dad hadn't even told mom he that hadn't had time he had had wow. peace about it mom goes does your dad know why? Uh, tell us about your kids. We have two girls and two boys: Natalie, Bonnie, Jack, and Michael. And That's a beautiful family. They're blessings, and I, it, it's really amazing what God shows you through your children. Right. You know, in so many lessons, you feel like He was trying to show you all along. If you see it in your kids, and uh, 
just grace in how he deals with you. And sometimes so. um, if I get impatient with them, God's like, you know, I don't, I don't get impatient with you. Right. I don't, you know, I, I treat you very sweetly. So then I get convicted to hmm. do better. Yeah, but, uh, so true, so true. Well, some interesting things about uh, Caleb, which he already mentioned, his family lived off the grid for 15 years. And one of the memorable things, I went and visited them. I don't know why. Oh, it was because of uh, Betsy. Betsy. And so, but they had a literal hand pump at the sink. I was like, what in the world is this? And so, uh, it was, so they really did. It was, it was quite amazing and very interesting. Um, Caleb has been to Ethiopia. Um, you want to tell us about that briefly? Yeah. Um, I have a friend who is a missionary. He was a missionary for a number of years in India, and they kicked him out because of his missionary work. They labeled him a terrorist, so he can't go back to India. So he started working in Africa, and right now he can't go over there because of all this travel restrictions. But right. anyway, at the time, he, he was going over. He needed a travel companion, so we'd been friends for a number of years. He was there right after I got saved in my life so good brother and uh anyway i said yeah i'd love to go so we spent about three weeks over there uh it was uh very interesting i actually mostly was in addis ababa which is where her grandmother lived before she came to the u.s so interesting yeah yeah her and my grandpa got engaged yeah (laughs) so anyway it was uh that's interesting that was kind of a really different thing for me because otherwise I've never really been out of even yep. Texas very much. I mean, yep. we used to take vacations, but I'm not an international traveler by any means. That's interesting though, but that was neat over there. Um, also, Caleb, some of you may know and some of you may not, but he plays the guitar and actually is a blessing, goes with us to the county jail and plays and sings there and they sure enjoy that. And I bet a lot of you don't know that he actually can play the piano. And how long did you take lessons and play? Um, well, I took lessons, uh, I guess, pretty steady from the time I was nine or ten till three or four years. And then um, the songs I learned at the end of that period, I, I maintained for a very long time. I've forgotten them now, but mostly I would I'd sight read just well enough till I knew how it was supposed to sound. And then muscle memory. I would just play by ear after that. So that good? I never could sight read well enough to just sit down and play something. So looking forward to Sunday when <laughs> he plays this is not. <laughs> so don't do that. Oh, well, that's great. That's, that's interesting. Um, Julie can play the flute. Now, she played in the, uh, well, she plays up here, yeah, in the band. But um, you may not be able to hear her very well, so we need to have a few more specials where we could hear you play. Um, and she also can play the guitar, um, which I don't know that a lot of people know that as well. How long have you been playing the guitar? My dad got me a guitar when I was 18, and he knew that I'd always wanted to play. And so I guess um, I haven't practiced in a while, but I, I can still pick it up and do some chords. And I keep saying, I'm going to get back on it. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's neat. Um Julie, also, I, I've got to bring this up. Cause one of my fondest memories of Julie, of course, remember her since she was so little, but I got to coach her in volleyball, and um, one of the better setters that I've ever coached, uh, I, I thought about this when we were going to do the interview, and I said, well, I just need to tell the story. So, <laughs> But we had, we had come from uh, Kristen was setter, and we were going to, and she graduated, and Julie just hadn't had a lot of, opportunity to set and a lot of experience and so i gave her a little challenge now we need to set her next year and so she worked the whole summer and i don't know how many hours you put in a lot of hours and uh was one of the biggest transformations in a volleyball player that i've seen um, in all my years of coaching she came back that next year and was a setter and not only was she a setter we had a one court setter so she set the whole court and did a phenomenal job so Kudos to Julie. She's one of the better setters that I've ever coached. Um, volleyball was fun, wasn't it? It was so exciting. I learned a lot. learned a lot about teamwork. And I really enjoyed my years in volleyball. That coach was loud and mean. but no. <laughs> um, Julie also taught in the school for five years um, until their kids came along. And yeah. so she had to go home and teach the kids at home until maybe later she'll come back. Yeah. But 
Um, tell us what grades and stuff you taught and did. Um, well, when I the year after I graduated, I helped Miss Cindy, and I think I believe she was doing third and fourth grade, and um, I, I taught with her for two years, and then I started helping with the second grade, and I helped with that for another year, and then I took over second grade, and I think a second and third grade I had for maybe two years. Um, I I don't know. It was fun. I taught Zachary and Josh, and then I taught Kyle, um, Ben, Brett, Dusty. Now I feel like I'm forgetting one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the Madison, Kelsey, Madison. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. my last, co- uh, last class, class was Clayton, Madison, and Amazing Kelsey, to see them all growing up now. It's just, mm-hmm. I, it's just, it's really special to know you had, were able to have that impact, you know, that you know, few months of helping them and, you know, it's just it's right. special. Right. Really is. Um, also something interesting about Julie that you may not know is she enjoys writing children's stories and she's actually written several. I, not so, I've written a few. A few, several, a few. <laughs> yeah. So one day we're going to get them in a book <clears throat> form and we'll get to enjoy them. But that's something interesting that maybe a lot of people didn't know. Uh, Caleb, just tell us about your job now, what you got, what you're doing, and and uh, just in case some watching may not know that, but I'm sure most everybody does. Well, uh, mostly I try to help maintain the property here around the church and the school, and uh, and just uh, if a water line gets broke, fix it, and try to keep up the roads and uh, help with the grass and trimming trees and stuff like that but uh you know we've had some good projects around here too the pool and the school, the school sometimes renovating and stuff and uh it's just been a real treat getting to work around here and be close to home and i you know how i am i like to check in in the school and mm-hmm. see what's going on most every morning during the school year and i like being able to be with uh the kids and around the property you get to you get to see people you know, uh, every from day to day. Right. That's been one of the things I really miss when uh, all this stuff first shut everybody in. I was like, where is everybody? I know. It's worse being at home with nobody around. Right. right. But, um, but no, I, I really enjoy working around here. The Lord's uh, been good to me. Amen. Well, we're, so, we're glad the Lord sent you along this way, too. Um, well, anything that uh, you'd like to add before we finish up uh, maybe we might have forgotten or anything you'd like to add um i just uh just want to say i'm thankful for this church and this ministry you know i've grown up here i went through the school and i just i'm just really thankful that i'm here i'm thankful for being able to raise our family here and and just knowing uh you have encouragement of believers and faithful teachers and and my parents for the sacrifices that they've made and and just this this ministry and the people in it have um, covered us, um, our family, when we've gone through some dark times. Mm -hmm. And it was, the church played a really big role in keeping our family together. And Mm -hmm. I'm just grateful to that. Amen. Amen. And I agree with what she said and just really glad to be here. I appreciate our church and church school and the influence that that all has on our our children and our family and the support for for myself you know the fellowship and us as a couple and uh and just the good examples we have and uh good teaching and uh, also just like to brag on my good wife that you know was uh, her and our place here you know just been a real great blessing to me it's been uh, God's good God's merciful I definitely I'm grateful to be here hey, amen don't deserve to be here but well glad we sure you. glad Lord got y'all here too and thank you so much for sitting down with us and thank I, you. I thoroughly enjoyed it and the talks like this we could go on and on and on for you know <laughs> a while so but thank y'all so much for tuning in tonight God bless y'all Well, amen. I sure enjoyed that interview, and I'm sure you did as well. And uh, 
So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll be dismissed and appreciate you tuning in and hope you all have a good weekend and we'll be in prayer for the storms and things coming by. And if you need anything, let us know. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you tonight for your mercy. Lord, you've been so merciful to us. And Father, your long suffering that you've had to us. And Father, the, uh, the hedge, Lord, that you've put about us. And Father, we've seen time and time again how you've protected us through storms and, and troubles. And Lord, we've seen clouds split and go around and tornadoes inverted and going over us. And Father, you've always been so good to us, Lord. And we want to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness and Lord, your mercy that you've showed us. And Father, we do pray tonight for Granny and Lord, the family there. And Lord, that you'd wrap your loving arms, Lord, around them. And Lord, speak grace and peace. In, in her life, Lord, and strengthen her, Lord, in the days that, Lord, is going to be tough. And I pray that you just help her, Father. We love her. And, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, be a sister Sarah as she's there with her. What a blessing that is. Bless our pastor, Lord, and, and uh, with the passing of his father. And, Lord, we know that's hard. And, Father, that you would strengthen him. And, Lord, that you would lift him up in a special way. And, Father, also with all the decisions and all the things that, Lord, comes along with being a pastor. And, Lord, the burden of, of seeking out your face and knowing what's right. Lord, we pray that you would just lift him up and encourage him. And, Lord, continue to lead and guide him. Lord, that we've seen already, Father, what a blessing. And I pray that you would just continue to do so. And, Lord, I pray that you'd give us wisdom to be able to come behind him and lift up his arms and Lord help him in those efforts and Father we pray for Sister Donna Lord that you would strengthen her Lord in her physical ailments and Father only you know what you're doing and Father we just pray that you would lift her up thank you that, that Lord that she's the wonderful pastor's wife and Father that she Lord goes through all these things with a smile and Lord showing us what grace is and Father I pray that you would just continue to bless her in a special way and Lord just continue to heal her body and Father, we pray for our president and, Lord, all the leaders and, Lord, all the way down to the mayors and judges and everybody making decisions that affect people's lives. And, Lord, that you would, Father, uh, pray that you lead and guide them. And, Lord, that you would put a stay on the devil, Lord, as we know that that's, a Lord, the spirit that's going around. And, Father, we pray that you just, Lord, help them and give them leadership, Father. And, Lord, I pray that you be at Brother Skelton. Father, that you would heal his body. It's been a long trial on him as well. And Father, that you would, uh, Lord, administer healing and comfort, Lord, and, and relieve the pain that he's having and the problems, Lord, that he's having. Father, that you would strengthen Sister Skelton. And Lord, bless little Sarah. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless them in a special way. And Father, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, be with each and every one of us here, Lord. And we do pray, Father, as, as the hurricane approaches and hits, Lord, down uh, on the coast, Father, we pray for mercy, Lord, and, and we understand and know that we're no better, and Lord, that, that, that we deserve the worst of it, Father. But, Father, we pray for mercy, Lord, for those people, and Lord, I pray that they would be able to get out, and Lord, that you would show mercy, Lord, during these days. And, Father, as it passes up through East Texas, Lord, and Father, you know exactly where we are, and Father, you know exactly what we need, but Father, our prayer and our petition tonight is that you would protect us once again, Lord, as you've done so many times. Father, we rest in that, Lord, knowing that, that you're a good God, and Lord, that you know what we need, and Father, we ask that you would put your hand of protection on us, and Lord, let the storms pass over, and Lord, uh, that you would protect life, and Lord, property, Father, we do pray for Heidi and the family there as they deal with uh, all the things that come with COVID. And Lord, I pray that you'd give them grace. And Father, that you would bless them. And Father, I pray that you'd lead and guide our pastor, Lord, in those matters as well. And Lord, we pray that you'd be with Brother Gerald. Thank you for him. Heal him up, Lord. And is he uh, heal his body up from that surgery, Father, that you would bless him in a special way. Thank you for his friendship and his love, Lord, for this church and this body. And Lord, we do pray that you would bless us now as we finish out the week. Lord, be with our men as they go to work. Protect them as they go and they come. And Father, be with our ladies as they uh, tend to the business of the home. And a lot of that's going and run into town and shopping. Father, I pray that you just protect us as we're on the roads. And Lord, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, be with our church. Lord, thank you again for this place. And Lord, what you're doing and Lord, what you're going to do here. We love you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. 
And Lord, I pray that you would help us as we get ready for Sunday, Lord, be it our pastor, as he, Lord, uh, gets ready to, to present the message. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, deal with our hearts, Lord, and prepare our minds, Lord, to hear what you have for us, Father, Sunday morning. We thank you, Lord, we love you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you all. Have a good week. Dear Savior, what he had purchased for me when it counts. Bye.